Good evening, everybody. Andy Petrazza here with Special Effects Academy on the November 4th Forex Weekly Outlook, the uh, starter session for the week of trading. On, uh, as I said, November 4th, 2018, we'll take a look at the week that just ended as well as how the week that is starting is, um, is looking. So that said, we'll get ourselves started right away. Our usual agenda, peak at the prior week, our currency strength meter, fundamental announcements for the week, look at the charts for the major pairs, any setups in progress, and a few parting words. Starting with the uh, long-term ledger, not a great week. We did have a significant drawdown due to uh, the USD-Swiss uh, trade uh, going against us uh, towards the beginning of the week. Uh, we did some trades. Uh, we were up a few, down a few, nothing uh, really noteworthy. We did hold our own on most of the trades, and we do have six trades open at this time on the long-term account that are currently carrying a little bit of profit. They ended the week out negative, so Friday afternoon, we were down by about, I'm going to say, close to 50 pips. And uh, as soon as the week started, they uh, they reversed, and we are at profit right now with uh, four out of the six trades. And uh, that is continuing to move in our favor. Hopefully, that continues throughout the rest of the week. Uh, for now, that's what it is. Uh, so those are like at this point in time. Short-term trading, I did not open any trades on the short-term account this week. Um, Callum, though. He's uh, managing uh, a separate short-term trading account, so he will present those results uh, either at the tail end of this session or in a separate one. Not sure what he's going to do on that. But on uh, my uh, on my short-term account, there were no trades placed for the week. It was a strongly fundamental week uh, with just a lot of things going on. I didn't want to take the risk of the short-term trades. And indeed, this week, as we'll look at the calendar, and there is also a strongly fundamental week. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the short term on uh, this week that's opening. We'll see as we go along. But bear in mind that it is also sharply uh, uh, fundamental. All right, uh, moving on. Um, so as I said, no trades taken short term on a um, strongly fundamental week. Some of the older long-term trades closed particularly the U.S. and Swiss, one generating an interim drawdown. No trades open on the short term, of course, since none were opened at all. Moving on to the relative strength meter for the week that just ended and the week prior, we do see that volatility is uh, pretty much unchanged. It was 2.5% the week before last and 2.74%, so a quarter of a point difference this week that just ended. We can, however, see a little bit of uh, reversals happening on a few currencies. The week before last, the Aussie was definitely a straggler. This week, it had a brilliant showing. It did appreciate against every other currency, one of the clear winners of the week. The uh, CAD had a, uh, a bad showing. There is no way of hiding that. It uh, depreciated strongly against uh, Kiwi, Aussie, and Pound. And even though it gained ground on the euro, the dollar, the Swiss, and the JPY, it did not do so in any large amount. The uh, Swiss was also back. It continued depreciating against other currencies except the yen. Euro was, um, did well against some, did poorly against others. We'll see that as we uh, cover the conclusions in a later slide. The uh, pound had one of its better weeks in quite a while, gained ground against pretty much every currency out there, barring the uh, Kiwi and the Aussie. So both Kiwi and Aussie had pretty good weeks. Uh, the yen was the overall loser, and, and a very strong loser. You can see that dark red color at the top of the uh, Japanese bar. So it did a uh, backslide against every other currency out there. As I mentioned, the Kiwi had a good showing at the, the Aussie. So the Kiwi was also at the front. The dollar, uh, the dollar went down against everybody except the Swiss and the yen. So not a good week for the dollar. And the metals, uh, silver had a really, really good showing this week. And uh, gold was um, pretty much uh, a down, um, continued its downtrend 
uh, where it appreciated against another currency, it did so at a very uh, small level. So that's where we are with the uh, relative strength meter. Moving on to our fundamental announcements for the week. And again, this is another heavily fundamental week starting tonight. Uh, we do have Bank of Japan's monetary policy meetings coming out in uh, less than an hour. And at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, Governor Kuroda-san's speech, uh, the Bank of Japan governor, is uh, giving one of his uh, press releases slash speeches. Um, Monday, tomorrow, we will have the uh, governor of Canada giving a speech at 8, 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we will have the Reserve Bank of Australia's interest rate decision and rates statement in the evening, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight. Tuesday, November 6th, in the late afternoon, 4.45 p.m., we have the employee numbers coming out of New Zealand. Wednesday, our Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate decision at 3 p.m. the afternoon will be an early Monday. Um, and for some reason, I have two interest rate decisions here at 3 and 4 p.m. So I'll have to do a little bit of digging um, to see which is the, uh, the correct one. I'm getting two different hours here on the calendar for Wednesday. We have time, so I will get that uh, clarified. More importantly, rate decision and monetary policy statement coming out at 2 p.m. Uh, so we pretty much have a fundy every single day of the week. Um, Thursday continues at 7.30 p.m. We have the Reserve Bank of Australia's monetary policy statement. So it's bang, bang, bang. Every day we have something. And wrapping up the week at the end on Friday, we have the UK releasing its gross domestic product quarter over quarter and month. That's not generally a, uh, a strong or, uh, I guess, a high impact fundamental. It is considered such, but I normally don't trade these. So I think at least that Friday morning I'm going to sleep in late, so I'm not going to bother with that one. The other ones, however, I will probably trade them live. I will send out a with that effect based on what I um what I am going to do mm, for these. Um, in particular tonight with the Bank of Japan, I'm not going to do much. I'll certainly monitor it, but uh, I'm not going to have the trading room open. But tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow with the Australian. So again, between now and then, I'll make a decision on all these interest rates, uh, on all these fundamentals. And I will release a, uh, a firm calendar on what will be traded live. Of course, you know that the Fed interest rate decision will be live traded. You can put that on your calendars right now. Thursday, 1.30 p.m., half an hour before the interest rate decision, the trading room will be open. Uh, the other ones, I will, um, I will make a decision between uh, now and then. Hold on one second, guys. I've got a battery problem on one of my devices, so I need to hook it up so that I don't lose him. So give me one second to get that straightened out and I'll be right back with you. Okay, that's taken care of. Sorry about that interruption. And with that, we are going to continue with the uh, presentation and we're gonna start looking at the major charts. So the Euro, as was mentioned at the uh, beginning of this session, the euro had a very nice week against the dollar. It um, it went to um, the the highest it's been in in more than a week um, before sliding back down. So we're already seeing it go back into dollar strength. But at the end of last week was just a, a brilliant time for the um, for the euro against the dollar. Uh, so that one is uh, is worth keeping an eye on. Uh, we are going to have another fundamental this week, which is not on the calendar, and that's the U.S. midterm elections. They're all day Tuesday, so the polls open early in the morning on Tuesday. They close at 8 p.m. Uh, 8 p.m. local time, so we'll be closing first um, on the East Coast, then moving into Central Time, Mountain Time, Pacific Time. 
So the last ones will be closing at 8 p.m. Pacific time, which would be 11 p.m. on the uh, East Coast. So it's going to be pretty much a full day of, um, of polling. And then results will start coming in by localities throughout the night. Um, it's a key election. Uh, we're not electing president. We're electing our local officials, as well as some of the congressional seats that are open for re-election this time around. That means that Congress, uh, both houses, the, um, um, the Senate and the House of Representatives, has the possibility of flipping a uh, majority. So the majority may end up on the Democrat side, which would not be good for President Trump's, um, well, next two years. He, if, uh, if he loses uh, the House or the Senate, he would have a lot of uphill battles uh, trying to pass legislation. It would pretty much guarantee a stalemate uh, in our uh, lawmaking. So that would definitely not be good for the dollar. So the dollar's strength depends in great measure on what is going to happen on Tuesday. And again, that's a fundamental that's not on the calendar, but you ignore it at your own peril. So we will be taking that into account and I will be, of course, be looking at the election results very closely to see if there are any trading opportunities on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. So more about that later throughout the week, but I just want everybody aware of it, especially the non-US people on the call, which may not be as um, tuned into our election cycles, that this is a very key week and the dollar hangs in the balance. So that being said, it looks like the dollar is uh, gaining again on the euro, and this is definitely a bearish chart, and I will continue to try to trade it towards the bottom as many opportunities as it gives us, but we have to take Tuesday's election results into account. Moving on to the pound dollar, same thing as I mentioned at the top of the call, the pound had a pretty good week. There was a lot of positive news regarding Brexit coming out, one of the more positive bits of news was revealed as a fake just a few hours after it was released, but it looks like the market didn't care. The market digested the fake news, didn't pay attention to when it was revealed as fake, and the pound simply kept appreciating. And that's what you see here on this chart. It had three straight days of, uh, of bullish action uh, here in, uh, in the week that just ended. It hit support resistance, uh, resistance rather, it hit resistance as it was trying to go through the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, you can see that one of the uh, horizontal points of the resistance is also drawn there. And it neatly bounced off of that. Um, so we are looking, again, I'm looking at a stronger dollar this week, depending on the election results, of course, but all things being equal, and if um, the House, the Senate, or both of them don't flip over to the uh, opposing party, I would be looking at a stronger dollar. At the same time, if any bad news comes out of Brexit, that would be another spike driven into this currency pair. Uh, so all in all, there's more bearishness to be on the lookout for on the pound dollar than bullishness. But of course, we don't trade those predictions. I hate predictions. Uh, we trade what's actually happening. So we have to wait for all that to play out and then see which way the pound dollar is going. But that is my, I guess, armchair analysis at this point in time. USDJPY, uh, we traded this on a somewhat successfully as a drop toward the clouds. It then went in the opposite direction. So it pretty much finished the week. I'm going to say... Uh, not too far away from where it started the week. I guess it had a pretty good run on uh, one day of the week. Um, that didn't last, uh, and that's where we traded it down. And then it pretty much ended at the high of that, um, of that one bullish candle, one strongly bullish candle that it enjoyed um, throughout the week. So a little bit of a step up. It's up by maybe, well, less than 100 pips. So the total gain for the week was less than 100 pips, but it did gain. And right now, again, I don't see anything going on in this one. This is one of the few pairs that overall went into dollar strength instead of dollar weakness as the uh, week wound down. So keeping an eye on it to see how it opens this week. Of course, we have uh, Kuroda-san's speech later tonight. So got to take that into account with the yen. 
But um, all in all, this is a really good pair to keep an eye on, but wait for it to establish the uh, direction for the week before you trade it. USD Canadian, the CAD is a currency that has everything going in its favor, yet has failed to significantly strengthen against the other currencies out there. Not sure why, but just pointing out that that is the case. So the CAD continues weakening against the dollar significantly over the past couple of months. Uh, this is from September. Here at the bottom is sometime early September through today. So we have that bullish trend still playing out. It has crossed uh, quite a few levels of resistance along the way. Uh, the Ichimoku cloud, as well as these uh, horizontals that I've laid out there. And it looks like it's looking for that trend line or the top of the chart or both of them, depending on what angle it takes. Of course, until it gets there, that's not a given. So this is another one that is worth keeping an eye on. Um, no, uh, no predictions at all. In general, I am bearish on the USD CAD. I expect weakness to come back to the dollar at some point, but that could be a year from today. It doesn't have to be right now. Eventually, we will see this pair start trading towards the bottom of the chart, but that'll be when it's good and ready. For now, we trade whatever the charts give us. USD Swiss, another one that has hit its high. In fact, it cleared the prior highs that we see on this daily chart before bouncing back down. It is trading once again very near parity, the one equals one area. I'm already short on it again, simply because it's reached the uh, what I consider the point of no return. If we look at some of the un other indicators around here, we also have the Chiku, this green line that it serves as an early warning system. Um, we have it uh, trying to dip down. If we have a Chiku crossing the candles at some point in the future, that would be a major uh, point of, um, of bearishness, a good entry for a short. In this case, I am a channel trader when it comes to the USD Swiss, so I'm always going to be looking for shorts when it's as high as it is right now, regarding of the fact that I may take a few losses along the way. Um, so that's where we are with the USD Swiss. Obviously, I don't expect it to go any higher than it has already done, barring some sort of calamity on the worldwide financial landscapes. And that is where we are with that one. More on that one as the week progresses and we see what it starts doing. Aussie dollar, this was uh, one of the surprising breakouts um, during the week. I did not honestly expect it to go as high as it went. So it went into extreme dollar weakness, Aussie strength. It did make a trip into the Ichimoku cloud definitely broke away from that trend line it has been following and this is i'm going to say the strongest uh breakout from that trend line it's shown all year so you can see that that trend line has never been significantly threatened until now um so that obviously should give us pause again i'm bearish on this up here i would expect it to head back down but this is still a uh, an event that um that commands our attention. So I'll wait a bit and see exactly what it, uh, what it intends. If we do have a breakout beyond the cloud, I will reluctantly but decisively become a buyer and start trading this one up, but not until then. Until then, I'm still a bear when it comes to this pair. Kiwi dollar, same thing. It is attempting to uh, do a cross of the Ichimoku cloud. We have to remember what prompted the collapse of the Kiwi in the first place. And that was a labor government, a liberal government getting into a New Zealand late last year, early this year, I forget when it happened. But that made the Kiwi completely collapse. I'm gonna guess it was, yeah, it could have been around March, but I seem to remember it was more towards the beginning or the end of the year. So I'll have to look at a longer chart or of course just Google it and find out the date. Um, but the collapse of the Kiwi was um, uh, accelerated or even initiated by the Labour government having one power in New Zealand. Uh, so this is extremely vulnerable to the same thing happening in the US if we see one or both houses of Congress flipping over. So this is a key pair. Uh, definitely trade the fundamentals on this one as the week progresses. In general, from the technicals, of course, this is still bearish. And until it crosses that cloud, or indeed 
starts crossing the levels of resistance above current price, uh, it is still bearish. So keep an eye on it. I would still be looking for good opportunities to trade it down uh, more than trade it up. But in general, I'll take whatever I can get. I will trade the charts on this one while keeping an eye out for the fundamentals. Aussie Canadian, we already said it. The Canadian has everything in its favor, yet it continues to get weaker, even against somebody like the uh, Australian. So another one that is starting to get to an interesting point as it crosses the Ichimoku cloud. If we continue seeing Australian strength, uh, this one could make a good fight towards the top. So again, keeping an eye on it, but I will not be necessarily jumping into any trades in that direction until I see a little bit more decisiveness. In fact, I'd be more likely to take a bounce towards the bottom than to enter long, but it will be depending on what the charts are telling me at the time. Euro Swiss, um, Euro Swiss, the Swiss had gained strength against the Euro for the last couple of weeks and then pretty much gave it up last week. So we see it again revisiting the uh, prior level of support resistance right above the Ichimoku cloud. I'm still looking for Swiss strength to return to the market as well as Euro weakness. So my predilection on this one would be to trade it down and it certainly has a nice bit of space. But again, I need to see it actually happening. This is one I'm not gonna jump into too early. Euro pound, and we are already short on the Euro pound. I flip my, uh, my direction on the Euro pound completely because we trade whatever the, um, the charts are telling us to trade. And in this case, they gave me a bearish entry and boy oh boy has that thing gone down. So we already took some profit along the way and then late last week I re-entered and that trade is currently at profit as we speak, one of the open trades, and we are still trading it down on full further notice. Really not until further notice, until the charts, my uh, systems, my indicators start telling me to trade it in the opposite direction. So that is where we are right now with our friend the Euro pound, as the news from Brexit continues to be good for the pound. And uh, even if it's fake news, the fake news is really good for the pound and people don't care. So the pound is getting stronger and that's how we will trade it until it stops. Euro JPY, um, I have a pending order to sell the Euro JPY, which you can see on the screen. I forgot to hide those when I ran the charts. But you can see that I have a pending order to, uh, to short the Euro JPY a uh, little bit below where it is. I am looking for yen strength to come back because the euro is having major issues above and beyond all the Brexit stuff. So there is stuff going on in Europe that should over time make the euro weaker against uh, the other currencies. And I figured I'd get into this one as soon as I saw some uh, continuation. We can see that we have a very nice downward trend line that has made a retracement. I'm looking for that continuation towards the bottom of the chart. And that's my pending entry order there on that one. Euro Canadian, this is one, I'll, I'll trade it when I can. I mean, we traded it up last week, I think, and made a few pips out of it. Um, but it, it's really not doing much. It's at a significant point of support has refused to go much below where it is right now. Again, the cat has everything in its favor, but uh, has not really moved in that direction. So uh, I'll keep an eye on this one, but I'm not you know, holding my breath. Pound JPY, this is another one to be all the way at the bottom yet isn't, uh, as the pound continues to, uh, to thrive on uh, the news coming out of Brexit in the last week or so. And the yen, for whatever reason, has, uh, has weakened at the same time. It is doing a pretty good attempt at crossing that Ichimoku cloud, a very thick cloud, by the way. So it's making that attempt to cross it. Let's take a look and see if I can, well, okay. So the Chiku, that green predictor line, has crossed the candles bearishly back here, uh, which again, gave us a good entry for a, uh, a drop here that it did fulfill. But more importantly, it's now turned around and is starting to threaten the candles right above it. So again, you can see the sideways nature of this pair. It's really not giving us any momentous entries. I would like to trade it down 
simply based on fundamentals, but um, they haven't been playing out well. So I will treat this one with kid gloves. Uh, we'll be looking at the technicals as well as the fundamentals, but not, again, not holding my breath. Probably better for short-term entries than long-term ones anyway. Uh, Aussie JPY, this is the pair that I really put on on Ignore, except for very short-term entries. Uh, it's been moving sideways since back in March. It's the one Aussie pair that did not continue weak weakening from March onward and just pretty much traded sideways. So had you gotten in in March at this level, you would be at break even today. So it, long term, it's been a waste of time. Short term, it has given quite a few opportunities along the way. So another one that I'll keep an eye out for, especially if we see an Aussie recovery. If that Aussie decides to recover, this thing is going to knock out those 700 pips towards the top probably inside of a week. Uh, simply because this one has uh, not weakened as much as the other ones. So it's going to be an easier recovery. So keeping an eye on it, not holding the breath. Euro New Zealand, and we've traded this one down a couple of times uh, recently. So definitely the Kiwi has had a good showing this past week. We can see that it made quite a nice strength play. It's still significantly above this next trend line of, uh, of support that's coming from way back in the day. Um, so it's got probably another 300 pips, 300 to 200, depending on the angle, before it reaches that, um, that trend line. And I'll be looking for opportunities to short this one if the trend continues, or indeed to go in the opposite direction if I see a reversal happening. I am more bullish the Kiwi than I am the Euro, so my bias would be that this one still has uh, room to give us towards the bottom. And our last pair, if I'm not mistaken, the Pound Canadian, again, a very sideways pair from July onward. Uh, the CAD has definitely not uh, been able to take advantage of uh, its fundamental strength in any pairs, and especially not in this one. And last week with the, uh, with the Pound recovery, we saw this one give up uh, a lot of uh, what it had made in the prior week. So keeping an eye on this one as well, but until the pound settles down, until we have decisive news coming out regarding Brexit that, uh, that we can bank on, this is not going to be an easy pair to trade. On other news on Canada, and it's really not Canadian, but we do have the U.S. Uh, saying they are going to be reimposing sanctions on Iran uh, this week um, and probably giving a waiver to a couple of allied countries to allow them to continue buying Iranian petroleum oil so that is also going to play out and it may affect the price of oil and we all know that if the price of oil goes up the canadian should do better so keep an eye open for that as well um obviously in the case of this pair it will be overshadowed by uh, brexit news so you can't trade on just that so that's it for the um for the charts on the usd payers as i mentioned we're going to have key U.S. elections this week, potentially confirming Trump's hegemony uh, for another two years or providing an upset as control of Congress partially or wholly shifts to the Democrats. So Tuesday into Wednesday, you guys need to keep an eye on that or get out of the dollar. It's going to be very volatile if anything, um, if any upset comes out of the elections. The euro, it regained strength against the dollar, but was iffy with the other currencies. So it's sort of in a, um, in a I'm going to say, uh, I guess it's poised to do something, but even the euro doesn't know what it wants to do. I'm bearish on the euro in general, so keep an eye. I'll be keeping an eye for a short entries on the euro pairs uh, as much as possible. Um, and I'll just leave you with that. So make your own analysis, make up your own decisions, but be careful with the Euro pairs. Um, they are not uh, the easiest to trade right now as some of them are going in opposite direction. Pound pairs, the pound had a decent week and I'm not going to repeat that. Yeah, the fake news, but this, but that, the other. Anyway, the pound is still not out of the woods. So I'm still bearish on the pound in general, but I cannot deny that the pound has been bullish now for two weeks and counting. Swiss pairs continues Swiss weakness, but it has hit the channel extremes against pretty much every other currency. So it's at the top of the range. It's where I don't think it can go any further. Of course, it can do whatever the heck it wants to do. 
But uh, my opinion is that now is the time to start looking at some um, some Swiss uh, recovery or strength moves in the market. Of course, make sure that you have either the technicals or the fundamentals preferred both on your side, but be on the lookout for those entries. Last but not least, the CAD, um, again, not going to repeat it. It's got everything in its favor, has done nothing, but keep an eye on that one. And as my parting words, uh, Fundamental Week Part 2, we've got a continuation of all the fun fundies that were happening last week. So this is going to be another very tough week to trade on the short term because we, we could possibly be having very, very wide moves on multiple pairs based on the fundamentals that are scheduled for the week. So trade that accordingly. Don't get, um, don't get confused on your times. Remember, the U.S. time has changed. We dropped back in an hour. I saw somebody try to join this call an hour earlier as a result today. So no, this call did not start an hour late. I started at 6 p.m., but the clock did change overnight. So 6 p.m. is what used to be 7 p.m. a week ago today. Keep that in mind as well. Callum, of course, has his uh, daily uh, Facebook Live events happening all throughout November. Please attend them. They're really good. I've been getting great reviews. Uh, obviously, Callum knows what he's doing or I wouldn't be working with him. But he is uh, outdoing himself with what he's giving away for free on these Facebook calls. So if you can attend, uh, pay attention to them. I think he changed the schedule. I'm going to hand over the call to him immediately after this slide so he can um, clarify anything I said about his events. And um, that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any comments or questions for me before I hand the microphone to Callum. Okay, Callum, then it is all yours, and I'm even going to stop my share so that you can do as you please with the, um, with the screen. Thank you, everybody. Okay, right. Thanks, Andres. Yeah, the Facebook Lives are going to be 6 p.m. Eastern uh, for this week. Uh, and then I'll probably have another vote at the end of the week and see if anyone wants to change the times. But we'll see how we get on. Can you see my screen? Yes. All right. And you are seeing the journal, just to make sure I've got the right screen up. Yes. B, thank you very much. Right, so last week, the only thing that we... Um, Closed out was the Euro USD hit our stop loss, which was obviously my normal five pips above uh, or below break even, whichever way is going to give us a little safety net so that we don't actually lose money on break even. Um, this week, um, I'd be, I've just opened this morning, I've did some pending orders. Euro JPY, it looks like me and Andrews have got the same plan for this one, but as you can see, we've got a pullback to the to the 20 that's my signal so entry six pips below the candle stop loss six pips above and the other one is the euro usd again we've had a pullback set the 20 so six pips below stop loss six pips above pound usd well, the other one we was looking at or i was looking at sorry is a uh, pound jpy it's a nice pullback up to the 200. Um, has been respecting the 200 for a, a good push down. But we gapped up above where our stop loss would be. So it's invalidated that candle. So therefore, can't put a pin in order. Have to wait and see what this one does today. And we'll have a look at that tomorrow. Pound USD. It's had quite a steep pullback. And we've come back possibly a little further than I would have liked. But it has given us a, a bearish candle at the 50. Yes, we did gap up above, but we haven't broken the high of that candle. So I placed the pend in order, six pips below, and stop loss six pips above. So we'll wait and see what happens. Um, and that's pretty much it um, until obviously London Open, and we'll have a look at all the charts. So unless there's any questions, that's all we've done for this evening or this morning, whichever time it is. looks pretty good and yeah we, we do agree on quite a few of them actually 
Um, which again is normal. We normally don't disagree on direction. There are valid reasons for us to be going in opposite directions because we are individual traders. But it looks like our analysis, you know, 90% matches um, across time. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a great trading week. Yeah, most definitely. And right, since thanks, you've sir. changed the time to where it's not so inconvenient, I'm going to be joining you every day. Hey, thank you. I'll see you then. Awesome. Right, thanks, Carol. Tell mate. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.